I'll say a little hello. Right, you're recording. So this is who has who's away? Maeve, a movie. So this is all oh, anyone who wants to go home and watch it again as well. They might do. They might go home and watch it. Right. Okay. So let's have a look at this. So again, we were looking at these ideas about what um, the drugs were called. Dope, smack, scag, snow, horse, all of those sorts of things. Here yeah, as well, yeah, these are opioids. So this is what we were looking at yesterday. And they relieve pain and they reduce intensity of pain. Um, and they're synthetic, so they are manufactured in a lab. And if we can remember yesterday, um, I'm going to, so these are all the people that died. Um, right, let's have a look at this. This should be able to give you a bit more of an understanding of what opioids actually are. So, copy. Pardon? Yeah, they, they do get addicted to them, but that's the whole point. Um, so these are what opioids are. So.
Right, okay. So what are the attitudes towards drugs nowadays? Drugs like fentanyl, heroin? Gross. Yeah, negative, aren't they? Why are they negative? Because of what they do to people. And what do they do to people? Yeah, ruin their lives and what else? Kill them. Yeah, what else? Ruins other people's lives. Yeah, exactly. Now, where's that gone? There I am. Uh, so it ruins other people's lives as well. And what's the most awful thing about it is the fact that you think about all the people who are being um, ravaged by opioids, how much it actually costs the... Um, Hello. Hello. Oh, yeah. Let me have a quick... Is that always the hit? You probably saw it all the hot though. What? Because you're back? Huh? Because you're back and because you saw you had a hissy fit. That's great. I swear to God, if I actually get corona from you. Wait, was you here when we got the other day? Right, Leo. Corona week! That's <laughs> sorry, Leo. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, he should have been in the first. So, after five days, anyway, you can think of it. So, if you have a look on here, so opium. So, opium was uh, what started all of these things. So, opium, as we said before, is the milky latex that comes from the poppy. So, these are not synthetic. Synthetic means man made. These are. Um, where it all came from. So the opium latex is 12% morphine. All right. So, and this is all about confessions of an opium eater. So what they do, if we have a look down here, uh, it says, unfortunately, opiate drugs have the potential to be addictive, which is the whole point of what we were saying. Um, while opium is rarely used recreationally in the UK today, it does have a long and colourful history of you know, of drug use. Right, so our second thing is written in 1821. Who can tell me, Don, what do you think the attitude to drugs would have been back then? Positive new, well, like so yeah, good. Positive, yeah. it'll be something new. What do we not have as much understanding of? The effects. The effects. Okay, yeah and the, the the way the body works and therefore the effects upon the body of these so at that time period like when the opium wars are so the title is called the pleasure of opium so how do you think the tone will differ from the poison we pick it's about the same thing which are is opioids joyful nice why do you think it well not nice but why do you think it will be joyful Probably gave them a good yeah, very good. And also, the word pleasure is in complete contrast with the word poison. What does poison do to a body? Okay. Kills it, yeah, harms it, kills it, it makes it sick. Whereas pleasure is something that gives you great joy. So, immediately, flat. Damn you! Right. So I'm just going to. So we're looking at the second one. Yes, I don't have one. At least why not? Oh, you were all right as well, weren't you? Okay, so let us now. We're going to read through this. And I do want you to be super duper aware of his views, because one of the questions compares the views and the attitudes towards drugs of the writers. So we're going to read through this. The Pleasures of Opium from Confessions of an Opium Eater, which is actually this book by Thomas de Quincey in 1821. This is what drives me crazy about this is the fact that, first of all, I've lost myself. And secondly, how on earth, why can't you just go, I've got to go back to teams to see how irritating it is, children. You see. Can someone just give me a little bit of sympathy, please? 
Anyone? So I know, Elise, it's so annoying. Maybe, no, not that one. See, then this is what happened. Uh, I hope Ruby and Maeve are going to give me some sympathy at home. I bet they're not even watching this. I know they're not watching it now, but they will be watching it later, I won't they? Yeah, they will. I don't watch a single one of the lessons. Sorry. Oh, yeah. I do. He is horrible, isn't he? He's really horrible. I don't even like him anymore. You're not my friend, sorry. He's changed, yeah. He's had lockdown. And he's turned into a gangster. Well, I'm not happy about it. Yeah. Right, here we go. See, back here. every time it changes, I've got to go back in here to do it. So what do they say? Right, okay. right, well, we'll talk about this at the end, okay? Right, Um. so the confessions of an opium eater. Shh, otherwise you can read it. I feel a mystic... A mis a mystic importance attached to the minutest circumstances connected with the place and the time and the man, if man he was, that first laid open to me the paradise of opium eaters. It was a Sunday afternoon, wet and cheerless, and a duller spectacle this earth of ours has not to show than a rainy Sunday in London. All right, so he's immediately uh, talking about a horrible place. My road homewards lay through Oxford Street, which is in London, and near the stately Pantheon, as Mr. Wordsworth has obligingly called it, I saw a druggist shop. The druggist, unconscious minister of celestial, which means heavenly pleasures, as if in sympathy with the rainy Sunday, looked dull and stupid, just as any mortal druggist might be expected to look on a Sunday. And when I asked for the tincture of opium, he gave it to me as any other man might do. And furthermore, out of my shilling returned to me what seemed to be a real copper halfpence taken out of a real wooden drawer. Nevertheless, in spite of such indications of humanity, he has ever since existed in my mind as the beatific vision of an immortal druggist sent down to earth as a special mission to myself. Now, I'll try and link into, as we're reading this, all of the sort of the things that he talks about in terms of making the drugs seem heavenly and godlike and not of this earth. And it confirms me in this way of considering him that when I next came up to London, I sought him near the stately pantheon and found him not. And thus to me, who knew not his name, if indeed he had one, he seemed rather to have vanished from Oxford Street than to have removed in any bodily fashion. The reader may choose to think of him as possibly no more than a sublunary druggist. It may be so, but my faith is better. I believe him to have evinced or evaporated so unwillingly would I connect any moral remembrance with that hour and place and creature that first brought me acquainted with the celestial drug. Arriving at my lodgings, it may be supposed that I lost not a moment in taking the quantity prescribed. I was necessarily ignorant of the whole art and the mystery of opium taking. And what I took, I took under every disadvantage. But I took it, and in an hour, oh, heavens, what a re revulsion. What an upheaving from its lowest depths of inner spirit. What an apocalypse of the world within me, that my pains had vanished, was now a trifle in my eyes. This negative effect was swallowed up in the immensity of those positive effects which had opened before me. In the abyss of divine enjoyment thus suddenly revealed. Here was a pan uh, panacea for all human woes. Here was a secret of happiness about which philosophers had disrupted for so many ages. At once discovered happiness might now be bought for a penny and carried in the waistcoat pocket. Portable ecstasies might have been corked up in a pint bottle and peace of mind could be sent down in gallons by the mail coach. Okay, who can tell me what he thinks about this? He's in love with it. He is in love with the drug. Well done. Why? What is what? Why is he so loving it? What is so good about it? Which is what heroin does. Makes him feel better. Makes him feel better. It takes him away from his mortal, which means usual life. Okay. So what I want you to do, and I'm just going to stop the video now. So if you're looking at this at home, you'll just have to do this in your own time. Um, I want you to have a look at question number three down here. Now look at source B, look at signs 10 to 20. 
How does De Quincey use language in this extract to convey his feelings about opium? So what you're doing is we're going to have a look at this and we're going to have a look at the um, opium that he is. He has taken and what I want you to do is I want you to use the language to this is what we're going to do a little um, thing on next time I see you, which is not till Monday. But um, I want you to go through this and I want you to think about he's obviously positive. So the first thing you have to understand is his feelings about opium and they are positive feelings. All right. So what I want you to do is from lines 10 to lines. 20 so we've got 10 lines. Um, I want you to talk about all of the things that he loved. So I'm going to give you 10 minutes to go through this, underline or highlight the quotes and then obviously use the language techniques. Actually, what I'm not going to do, if you're watching this at home, I'm just going to leave this running. And so you might want to skip it uh, until this changes. Heavenly. Okay. Right, actually, I'm going to say to, to line 22, actually, that will make it better. So that's the bit you want to look at, okay? What was the list of things that... Things that, make, that, things that show his um, ideas about things. So he's obviously happy about it. I'm going to change that to line 22. So once you've done it, do remember, I'll be asking you and you, yeah, quote, how many have you done? Big fat? Yeah, I do. Zero. <laughs> okay. What don't you know what to write? So he obviously feels that he really likes it. Yeah, that's okay. So I'll give you one. Um, right, so he calls it a celestial drug. Okay. So the word celestial means what? Heavenly. So he feels like this drug has been sent by God. Because what he's saying is it's such an amazing drug and it makes him feel so good. He thinks it could not have been made by man. So if you think something is from heaven and something is that amazing, it, it reinforces the idea that he thinks it is an incredible experience. But only God could have given him. Do you remember this happened in 
1821 during a time when people were much more religious than they are now. Well, so there used to be shops that were just so rich. Well, exactly. He does actually say... Um, Yeah, so again, that highlights the idea of it being quite a mystery and yeah, very good. So, written down the um, techniques yeah. right this is all about language so you need to write down the techniques you need to use your verbs and your adjectives and things like that what is celestial like what's it describing the yeah heavenly the stars so it's kind of meaning the stars but in this case it kind of means like yeah. of god's glory celeste um so that again, so this was an adjective. Like you're only doing the lines from 10 to 22. Yeah, I did have a whole like five minute conversation about bumping it onto number 22. Ooh. Why? Because he actually said some really good things in line 21 and 22. Right, a couple more minutes because in the exam you've got to be able to do this really quickly. So in the exam, this is a language question, so you're probably going to be looking at three to four quotes to explore this. Um, in paper two, it is a um, five mark question. So we'll be going through this at the start of next lesson, what you actually have to do. But let's just get some feedback first of all. Right, one more minute. Right, okay, let's get some feedback. So I'm obviously going to be putting it on the board, talking it through, make notes on your sheet. Scarlett, can you give me one that you've got? Um, 
the negative effect was swallowed up in the immensity of these positive yes. effects. Yes. Right, this negative effect was swallowed up in the immensity of the positive effects which had opened up before me. Right, so what technique have you got there? Oh, I think that's a metaphor. Uh, the positive, yes. Yeah, so you've, and also you've got personification. So the negative effect was swallowed up in the immensity of the positive effects, which had opened up before me. So he's almost giving himself into this drug. Um, he's saying that the drug has kind of swallowed him. You also have the comparative language between negative and positive. Again, highlighting the fact that he thinks that whole experience has been a good one. Yeah, and I like, and also the fact that they said that he swallowed up. What does it make him feel? Seem like? Um, mm. He is being so. He's a person. He's been swallowed up by the effects. Uh, so he's trapped. Kind of trapped. If I swallow something, Fleur. Mm -hmm. Yes, taken over. If I was to swallow something, no. Nope. It's not, I'm not chewing it, I'm swallowing it. It's completely consumed, all right? Every part of him has been swallowed up. So here he is, the little opium eater, little Thomas de Quincey, and he's got... So every part of him has been consumed by this drug. So I think what this talks about is how huge he felt this experience was. It was massive. Very good. Um, Solly? Another one? Oh, my pains had vanished. Yes, my pains had vanished. Okay, um, so what technique have you had there? Well, it's like a painkiller, so it's working on two left. Yeah. That's it. So what is a technique? Come um, on, pick something out of that. Well then, Jack. Vanished. What kind of word is vanished? The verb, the doing word. They had vanished. And the noun pains, or the adjective pains, I suppose. Again, vanished, what does this suggest? Disappeared. They've gone completely. Again, reinforcing the idea that he thinks that this drug is amazing because nothing remains that is negative okay he's been swallowed up <laughs> nothing remains that is bad again reinforcing the idea that he thinks it's a, a, a positive experience uh michael why have you got anything else uh, i lost my moment in checking the positive <laughs> yep yeah, very good. I lost not a moment in taking the quantity prescribed. That's a statement. And also it shows his kind of like desperateness. So he's not worried about the negative effects. He's not worried about any side effects. He's just desperate. What could you possibly say about his ignorance or the ignorance of the time at, towards drug taking? Large. Yeah, large. So it, it kind of, if you were in a... Um, the second question where you have to compare the attitudes, you could talk about it reinforces his ignorance and the ignorance at the time as to the addictive qualities of opium, but also the negative physical effects. Very good. Uh, anyone else? Daisy, have you got another one? Um, uh, wait, what do Yep, we got that one down there. Where's that one? He, uh, I, I've got different ones on here. Oh, you didn't have before that sentence. Oh, is it the one before? Yeah. Oh, sorry. The uh, apologies. All oh, right. Okay. Oh, I see. Uh, sent down to Earth on a special mission to myself. Lovely. Again, um, Daisy, what does that suggest? Yes. 
sent down to Earth on a special mission to myself. Also, right, if you're going to be really perceptive, you could talk about the fact that he uses the word myself, suggests that he's becoming quite narcissistic which means he's only concerned with himself, which a lot of drug de drug users are, because it's such um, a, a thing that they're addicted to, they become very kind of narcissistic. So he's looking very much at the effects on him and sent down to earth on a special mission to myself. The whole thing is metaphorical, again, highlighting the fact that he feels like this drug is um, amazing, absolutely incredible. Uh, Lottie, have you got one? Yeah. Oh, heaven! Yeah, so the whole thing is a... Say that again. Yeah. Yeah. Apocalypse. Does anyone know what apocalypse means? Mm, kind of, yeah, James? The end. So he says the end of the world within me. So the end of how he felt before. And this is why um, heroin and opioids are so addictive, because what it does is it changes the way you think. And obviously it changes the physical way you feel. And if you think that is far better than facing up to the world, then that is how you become addicted. So you become addicted physically, but also mentally. It's like all my all my worries have gone away. What you have here is you have the repetition of the exclamation mark as well, indicating high emotion, indicating great joy and happiness. James. Also, um, heaven. Yes. Um, <clears throat> connotes happiness and freedom. Yes, and also, oh heavens, it's an exclamation of joy. And he's again linking to the idea of God, linking to the idea that he has taken this drug and it's opened up something in front, inside him and he no longer feels like he is affected by normal things, human things, human worries. Everyone's got problems and now they've all gone. Um, so that's De Quincey. Again, you can talk about things like this, and I don't expect you to go through all of these. You've got to pick out the ones that you think is better. Um, the fact, like Dom said, that he he seemed to have vanished from Oxford Street. Again, it kind of highlights. What did you say, Dom, about that? Can you remember about him not being there again? But he's just gone. So I almost like adds to the mystery. So he was a drug dealer. But remember, it's not like someone on a Boris bike whizzing around outside a fried chicken shop. That happens outside my dad's house. Um, dealing bike. drugs. A Boris bike. Yeah, like the rented bikes. The, the rented bikes in London. They're called Boris bikes because when Boris was the mayor of London, he brought them in. Um, and all the, all the bad boys just always nick them. So they just ride around on Boris bikes doing drugs. Well, maybe not doing them, but delivering drugs. However, this, and why do they do that? Why do the drug dealers now have to ride boys' bikes? And not just like, it's illegal. it's illegal. Very good. It's illegal because we know of the effects. So, next session. Uh, oops, I'm going the wrong way. We're going to be doing this question. And this question is, now look at source B, look at lines 10 to 22, how does De Quincey use language in this abstract to convey his feelings about opium? So we're going to be talking about the effects of opium and we're also going to be talking about the language used. So because I'm not going to see you now, tear, tear, broken heart, what I want you to do for your homework is to go through and look at those two, um, I might put another one on there, but there's definitely Storm on the Island and they're on YouTube, Kamikaze. I've got a YouTube channel. Right, good question. Are we doing the poetry? No. No, but you need to get yourself back up to speed with them. Your poems are not going to be in the mocks, but if we wait till after the mocks to get back into them, 
You don't want to have too much. Yeah, we are. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, we are doing poetry. We're not doing curious. Yeah. Um, should we take our books home? No. Don't take your books home.